It was so interesting as I began to seek the Lord about this morning's message. And I felt these words. His presence, our peace. What did Diana share with you? I hadn't talked to her. She had no idea what I was going to speak on. That prophetic word to you this morning was about his presence. And so I tell you that this message today has already been ordained by the Holy Spirit. You've already heard the beginning part of it. And now I'm going to share with you my message. And so I'd like for you to turn in your Bibles to Matthew 11. We're going to look at verses 28 to 30. I'm going to ask that you stand with me, please. If you would stand. It's on the screen, I know, but I hope, as every good Christian should, you brought your Bible to church. Matthew 11, verses 28 to 30. Let's read it together. Are you ready? I'll give you just about another 10 seconds. Let us read together. Verse 28. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Can you say amen? You can be seated. Before we get into this message, if you have not been here the last few weeks, I really want to encourage you to listen to Pastor Dave's message of a few weeks ago. Get on the internet or our website and listen to Dave Cunningham's message to our church. It was very powerful and timely. And some of the messages that have been here the last few weeks, I really encourage you to listen and to catch up with what's going on. This week I've been thinking about the turmoil, the political turmoil, the hurricanes now. We had Houston and now in Texas, and now we've got what's happening in Florida, what's happening in North Korea. And the question would be, God, how do we cope with all of this? God, how do we cope with all of this? Things are becoming more intense, more pressure, intense pressure. God, what would you say to us this morning? How can I receive peace and assurance in these days that we live? And the first thing that, uh, going back to what was admonished to you earlier, is that we just don't quit and we don't give up. And we don't blame. We just keep our eyes upon Jesus. Jesus' words to us this morning are eternal. The scripture says, forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Jesus' words to us are eternal. And I want to tell you that the Bible is the answer. There is no problem, no situation that God's word has already, God has already spoken about your situation. Do you believe that this morning? Do you believe that God's word has the answer for every human need every human problem and if you ever feel like well this is unique my problem is unique no it's not Ecclesiastes says there's nothing new under the sun <laughs> so we've just read this scripture and verse 28 Jesus says to you he's saying to you personally at the command by Jesus come to me Come to me. Come to me. How many times we will go to everything else? How many times we will go to everything else? We'll go to our friends. We'll go to the world's resources. We go to self-strength and self-ability. I'll just tough it out. Hebrews 4.16 says this. Come boldly to the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy. And find grace to help in time of need. 
I want to read it again to you. This is Hebrews 4.16. Come boldly to the throne of grace. Notice it's come boldly to the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The Lord tells you today, come boldly. Come boldly to my throne. What did Jesus say in that verse 28? Come to me. Come to me. All you who labor and are heavy laden, worries, anxieties, weighed down, stress, fears, situations that you have no control over. Are you hearing me this morning? Worries, anxieties, weighed down with things, stress, fears, situations you have no control over. And Jesus promised to you right now, it's eternal, but it's right now for you, a now word for you for this moment, a now word for you this moment, for you. He says, come to me, you that are just burdened down with so many things, and he says, I will give you rest. I will give you rest. The Amplified Bible says, I will ease and relieve and refresh your souls. Isn't that great? What will Jesus do? Now, he didn't say he would take away everything. But he says, come to me with all the stuff that you're carrying. And I like what the Amplified says. He says, I will give you rest. But he says, I will ease and relieve and refresh your souls. In the middle of it, David said, you prepare a table for me. In the midst of my enemies, you prepare a table for me. A feast. A feast. Right in the middle of warfare. But I want to take you back. He said, come to me. Come to me. Jesus, our shepherd, we must go to him. We cannot go to man. He says, his yoke. He said, take my yoke upon you. You know what his yoke is? It's his lordship. He's Lord. He's just not a heavenly butler. To just be there when I need him. He's Lord 24-7, 365. Is he to you? Is he Lord all the time? Or just on Sunday? Or when you need him? He's Lord. He said, take my yoke. And the yoke was the picture of the oxen. Would They would put a yoke upon them. Or... Imagine a couple horses being connected together. The yoke that would come upon them where they would go in the same direction. But the, here's the thing. They were connected. Take my connection. I'm connected to you today. I am connected to you, my child. I am your shepherd. I am carrying you. But that yoke, is the yoke of ownership. He is Lord. Is he your Lord today? Well, I know Jesus as my Savior, but listen, you don't accept Jesus as your Savior. You accept Jesus as your Lord, and he becomes your Savior. You understand that? We get it all wrong. He's Lord. And part of Lord is he's our Savior. But it signifies ownership. You don't belong to you anymore, brothers and sisters. You belong to him. You belong to him. Ownership. The shepherd that is over his sheep. And we need to say this morning afresh, Lord, take control of my life completely. I mess it up. I want to control it. How many of you found the more you want to control your life, the more you mess it up? 
<laughs> Lord, take control of my life completely. And we must relinquish control. We must relinquish control to him. See, that's where the peace will come. When we get yoked together with Jesus and we just relinquish control. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. And then he says there, learn of me. I want to tell you, if you've been a Christian 30, 40 years, 50 years, whatever, this never stops to learn of him. I don't care how many Bibles you have, how many Bible schools you've went to, how many church services you've went to, how many times you've read the Bible through. I want to tell you today, we must learn of him. God, what are you doing? What are you saying? The word this morning, prophetically, and this message title, His Presence, Our Peace. I want to admonish you, and again, you say, Pastor, it seems like you say this so many times. I'm going to say it again to you. Take time to be in His presence. Turn it off. Put it down. Spend time in His presence. Spend time in his presence. You would say how? How is your worship life this morning? How is your reading of the word of God? How is your prayer life? Let me ask you. How is your listening? How is your listening? He longs for you to get quiet. And these days and you know and I know that there are so many distractions. Especially that little plastic and metal thing that's in your purse or your pocket. It's got a mind of its own. And it cries for attention. It Maybe it rings for attention or buzzes. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Some people can't even turn it off in church. I might miss something. What my point is, his presence. Do you need this today even more in your life? His presence. And Jesus is saying to you this morning, He's saying it to you, I am gentle. Our Lord Jesus Christ is gentle, which means meek. And lowly of heart, which means the attitude of humility. You know, in the book of Isaiah, Jesus never defended Himself. The Bible says in Isaiah, Bruce Reed, he won't even step on. You know how easy it would be to snuff that out. His voice would not be heard in the streets because that was the nature of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Oh, he can speak firmly and loudly. And he will when he needs to. But he's saying, come to me because as the shepherd of your soul, don't ever think it's hard to ever come to me and that I don't understand. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you this morning? He knows. He's, in a, he's so approachable. That's why children love to be around Jesus. He was so approachable. You can go to him with anything. And you can go to him with everything. He knows you better than you know yourself. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Oh, there's such a need. For you and I to spend time in his presence. To learn of him. To learn of him. So many of us as believers have forgot that discipline. And it is a discipline. Jesus said in the Beatitudes. When you give. When you pray. And when you fast. And that's for a lot of us. That's a foreign word. When you give. When you pray. And when you fast. And the early church. This was such a part of their lifestyle not a matter if they fasted or if they they prayed or they gave it was just part of who we are our dna but jesus calls you today to him who is meek and lowly of heart and look what he says to the rest of verse 29 you will find rest for your souls 
Listen to what the Amplified Bible says again. It says, you will find relief and ease and refreshment and recreation and blessed quiet. I want to read that again. I think we might even have it in the software back there. I want to read it to you again. The word rest for your souls, it literally means relief and ease. Refreshment and recreation and blessed quiet. God wants the quiet, the, the anxiety of the heart, the anxiousness. Let me tell you a story about the Apostle Peter. Peter was with Jesus when Jesus taught this. And you know what Peter wrote in 1 Peter 5, 7? Many of you know this. Jesus, who heard these words, put in his own words in 1 Peter 5, 7. And you know what it says? Casting all of your anxiety, the word, or casting all of your care upon him because he cares for you. The word care there, casting all of your care upon him because he cares for you, literally means all of the anxiety. Look what it says there. Casting the whole of your care, all of your anxieties, all of your worries, all of your concerns, once and for all on him. For he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. That's your Savior. That's your Lord. And so many times we try to take it upon ourselves and we wonder why we're, we have ulcers and things are going on and I know I just need to go see the doctor and he can give me a pill or that bottle is waiting for me or other things. Listen, his presence brings you revelation of his love for you. His presence brings you revelation of his love and his care for you. But I want to say this to you. It also, his presence gives you a revelation of your authority of who you are in God. What you have in God. Come on. Who we are in God. What authority we have in Jesus Christ. You don't have to accept everything that comes against you without fighting against it in Jesus' name. And God will give you discernment what kind of prayers to pray and when to stand. But in the meantime, he says, come to me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Rest for your souls. I love it. His presence will bring you revelation of his love and his care. But also our authority in Jesus Christ. You need to write that down. That's so important this morning. You have authority in Jesus' name. And the demons of hell do, no, do not want you to know about your authority. Wave at me if you know this is true. This is true. Verse 30. He says, My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Yoked together with Jesus. Going together in your life in Jesus. It's easy. Oh, pastor, it's not easy being a Christian. Yeah, if you try to do it in your own strength. If you're not walking in communion with him, if you're not walking with him, yeah, it is hard. Might as well quit because you can't walk and do spiritual things without the Holy Spirit that's living inside of you and a surrendered heart. You can't do it. I'm telling you right now, you'll fall flat on your nose unless you understand that, thing of, that, that principle of coming to him and communing with him. You can't overcome you can't love your boss. You want to smash your boss. You can't overcome that thing on the freeway where people use extensions of their hands without wanting to say or do something. 
or that person you work with or that loved one or that friend or, or whatever. You cannot love people. You cannot live this Christian life unless you have the communion. You can't do it. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. And when we're yoked together going in Jesus, the Amplified Bible says, it's easy, it's good, it's not hard, sharp, or pressing. That's what that means. You put that back up if you would, Susan. It's good, it's not harsh, it's not hard, sharp, or pressing, but comfortable, gracious, and pleasant. We don't usually use the Amplified Bible in our church. We use the New King James Version, but I wanted you to see this. And my burden is light and easy to be borne. Why? It's the surrendered heart and a surrendered will. God make me willing. God will not make you willing. A will has to be surrendered. And when a will is surrendered, God anoints you to do those impossible things hard things for him. I know when people mean, Lord, make me willing. I'd rather say, Lord, I am willing. Come on. I am willing. Now, God, give me the strength and the power. But the words there, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. He will carry you with him. Let's look at some prayers some promises to you that we're going to put up. Susan, were you able to get those this morning? Psalm 119, 165. I'm really working her hard back there. Look at this. Great peace have those who love your law, and nothing causes them to stumble. Oh, this boy, you need to grab this. Great peace. It didn't say little peace. It didn't say peace. God says great peace. Have those who love your law. Do you love the law of the Lord? And look at this. Nothing. Not mother-in-law, father-in-laws, bosses, hurricanes, taxman, whatever. It's going to cause them to stumble. The word stumble there is scandalon. It means a stumbling block. Nothing causes them to stumble. How many of you being, are tired of stumbling over little things? Great peace have those who love your law. Of course, we need to know the law, his word in our lives. I love this. Great peace have those who love your law, and nothing causes them to stumble. Lord, help us to remember that in our dense heads. I hope you're writing these things down. These are nuggets. Let's look at the next one. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever for in Yah, which is short for Yahweh, the Lord is everlasting strength. Look at that. That's for you today. You will keep him in perfect peace because your mind is stayed on the Lord because he trusts in you. See the word trust. Trust in the Lord forever for in Yah, the Lord, is everlasting strength. Wow. Woo! How many of you take this? Perfect peace. The last one with great peace. This is perfect peace. Mm. Wow, Lord. Can you say thank you, Lord? Let's look at the next one. Psalm 1611. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Hallelujah, Lord. You will show me the path of life. God will lead you. And at the path of confusion, no, at the path of life. Because again, it goes back to that thing of a surrendered life, a surrendered heart that says, God, your will, not my will be done. Are you making plans without consulting with the man? <laughs> Everything submitted to Jesus always will lead us to the path of life. Because he again is our shepherd, leading his sheep. Pastor, I know that. Well, we don't know it like we should know it. 
Are you hearing me this morning? In your presence is fullness of joy. Listen, we, in the midst of everything that's going on in our world, there is a fullness of joy. We can have a feast in the midst of whatever is going on. Sickness, problems, because it does not come from you. It is not manufactured by this world. It is, it is divine promises given to his children. Divine promises given to his children. In your presence is fullness of joy. Christians, we ought to be the happiest people in the world, not look like we've been baptized in lemon juice. <laughs> At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The right hand is the hand of favor. And the Lord wants us to just pour favor on you. How many of you take that today? I want the Lord's favor. Hallelujah. We got one more, don't we, Susan? Yeah. Now, was that it? Look at this one here. I had read it, but I want you to see it again. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all of your care upon him because he cares for you. Again, just massaging that in, into your minds today. A man named Joseph Shriven wrote a song in 1855. And here are the words of that song, and don't ask me to sing it. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and tribulations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise, forsake thee? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou will find a solace there. Blessed Savior, thou hast promised. Thou wilt all our burdens bear. May we ever, Lord, be bringing all to thee in earnest prayer. Soon in glory, bright unclouded, there will be no need for prayer. Rapture, praise, and endless worship will be our sweet portion there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worship team, would you come back up? We're going to close our service this morning. Worshiping. Praising God. So church, did you hear this morning? Did you hear that his presence is your peace? I'll say it again. Wave at me. Is his presence our peace? His presence is our peace. And I want to say this. We're going to worship up here as we go. But if there's been a struggle, and you want to leave it in the altar of prayer this morning, if you want to just say, Lord, I've been carrying these burdens, I've been carrying these frustrations, I've been carrying this anger. I want to leave it to you in prayer. Yeah, but what if somebody sees me come up? Who cares? Listen, we ought to come to the point now, we don't really care what people think and get over the thing because we want God more than we want the, the praise of people. Are you hearing? So if that's you today and you just need to just leave something with you and the Lord Jesus Christ, Please, come, be set free, and give it to God. And receive, again, His presence is our peace.